Hey guys, it's Dr. Dan here, back again for another new video for you guys. Today I'm going to be doing my recent pickups, and this is actually kind of a combined pickups. I'm going to be covering my pickups for basically December and January combined, because I really didn't pick up too much in January, just a few games. So this is basically just going to be everything I picked up towards the end of last year, the beginning of this year. So let's jump into it. We have tons of stuff to cover, tons of handheld goodies, as well as tons of cool swag for my buddy Nick Nack, so we'll get into that. Okay, so let's jump into it. This is a big game right off the bat. This is basically the game I've been spending most of my time with throughout December and still January because it's such a big game and I'm still working my way through it. I'm getting close to the end now, but of course, I was really looking forward to this. Xenoblade Chronicles X, we have the special edition here. This comes with the game. Really gorgeous art book. It's worth it alone for the art book awesome 100 plus page art book like full size just a lot of beautiful artwork in the art book a matted art print and then the soundtrack on a flash drive i didn't i didn't even bother with the soundtrack because i don't know about you guys but i don't trust any flash drives or anything like that even if it's from nintendo kind of sketchy to me but i would have preferred the soundtrack on just a regular cd but let's jump into the game because it is a big one so I was obviously really looking forward to Xenoblade Chronicles X because one of my favorite RPGs from the last gen was definitely Xenoblade Chronicles. I love Xenoblade Chronicles, so obviously I was going to be super excited for Xenoblade Chronicles X. Whereas this one was very MMO inspired, this one takes the MMO inspiration and really builds on it. So Xenoblade Chronicles X is, if you don't know, is a gigantic, and I mean gigantic RPG. It's one of those colossal kind of open world RPGs that's very very heavily influenced by like MMO style RPGs a lot of the progression a lot of the missions and how it's laid out a lot of the skills and stuff like that I mean this one builds upon the gameplay of the original Xenoblade Chronicles so much I would definitely say the gameplay is definitely better than the original Xenoblade Chronicles there's just so much more depth and I mean there's a lot of depth there's just so much to this game I just can't possibly cover it all there's just so much to it but the environments, once again, like the original Cena by Chronicles, some gorgeous environments, absolutely beautiful environments. I find myself stopping amid the gameplay a lot just to kind of take in the scenery, a lot of beautiful scenery. And then within these beautiful environments, you'll see tons of roaming enemies and all that. It's just like this, it's kind of like an ecosystem. You see just characters and creatures roaming around in kind of packs and just acting like normal kind of animals. You see some animals rolling around or just moving together in a kind of pack or just kind of hidden in the environment. It's just a really interesting world. Really, really awesome gameplay though. It builds upon the actual gameplay which is like these auras that you can use and they have like cooldowns which is a typical kind of MMO style so you'll auto attack and then you can use and select all these auras. Auras are determined based off classes in this game. That's something new. There's tons of classes to choose from so you start off and then it's kind of like this class tree where you can build upon it. But it is a huge game. The story missions are laid out differently, whereas this was kind of your typical kind of story progression by moving town to town and going through areas. You kind of progress the story. In here, it's determined by taking main missions, and you have to meet certain conditions to take ma main missions and progress the story, which is a little different. So, for instance, you might have to like survey a certain amount of the world, or you might have to take on certain affinity missions, stuff like that. And one new addition that I really really like and it's a lot of fun and really awesome is kind of a big emphasis based off the cover here but that's the ability to pilot scales and scales are like this they're like robotic kind of mech suits like Gundams or something and you pilot them you can have your whole crew decked out in scales so you can go flying around and that allows you to reach like certain unreachable areas like floating islands and stuff like that but you also in your scales it's basically like a kind of second kind of attack kind of thing because once you're in your scale you have unique auras that are based off your scales weapons and equipment and gear but scales are very important especially towards later in the game and fighting some of these stronger enemies and stronger bosses because the game it was very doable for a lot of the game but then i i just recently finished chapter 10 and the game has gotten significantly harder really quick but there's definitely some grinding towards the end for sure. But with regards to the story, I do have to say that I think the original Xenoblade Chronicles definitely outshines this game when it comes to the story department. The story was just so much more interesting in the original. And this one, it's just, it's okay in the beginning and then it hits a certain point once they introduce this little twist in the story. I'm not going to talk about any spoilers, but they introduce this twist about what's going on in the world. And I thought that was really interesting. Those who have played that far kind of know what I'm talking about thought that was interesting but still in general it just feels like the story is just not anywhere near as strong as the original. The soundtrack is also not as strong as the original. That's not to say that it doesn't have a good soundtrack, it's just 
there's some really generic music that plays when you're in New Los Angeles and it's just some really bad kind of generic music that's kind of grown on me in a weird way but even I know it's not the best music but this game does have some really beautiful tracks I think some of my favorite tracks in the game are when you're in the Noctilum waters or just like exploring the waters like the open waters that has a great soundtrack and also Silvalum. Silvalum is one of my favorite areas in the game. It's this gorgeous kind of alien looking desolate kind of white wasteland. It's just so beautiful but it's got a beautiful musical piece for that. But yeah I'm still addicted to it. I mean I'm a sucker for these kinds of games. I easily get addicted to this kind of stuff but I do have to say just keep in mind this is a very overwhelming game. You're gonna feel very overwhelmed in the beginning. I definitely felt overwhelmed. I'm like 50 hours in and I kid you not, I'm still learning new stuff. It's that big of a game. For completionists, this is not for completionists. This is one of those games where it'll drive you nuts trying to collect everything or trying to do all the quests. I mean, you can play this game easily for 200 hours and still be doing new stuff. I'm not even kidding, but for those who love open world kind of RPGs and there's not a whole lot of RPGs to play on the Wii U, let's be honest. So. For those who are looking for a nice open world RPG and like kind of MMO style games, definitely check out Xenoblade Chronicles X. Great game, although still a little partial towards the original. And next we have a new PS4 pickup that I've been wanting to check out, but I decided to wait on it when it came out because I told myself, I'm like, if I give it time, I could definitely find this for like 20 bucks, and then it finally hit 20 bucks, so definitely a price I was willing to jump on it. And that's Oni Chimbara Z2 Chaos. Another great hack and slash by Tamsoft, and Tamsoft is pretty good at hack and slashes. And yeah, this is another fun one. I actually beat this. I played through it and really, really enjoyed it. That was just a really fun, solid hack and slash beat 'em up. It is so over the top, and like when you're fighting hordes and hordes of like enemies, it's just so awesome. Once you start leveling up the girls' abilities and stuff like that, and some of their weapons is is pretty epic some pretty cool epic boss fights and you just go through various stages and fight like a boss and all that typical kind of layout but a lot of fun just a really quality fun hack and slash with a lot of weird story and charm to it and then really sexy girls in bikinis just killing tons and tons of zombies and all that but it's a load of fun and there's a lot of stuff to do like even after you finish it so there's like missions you can do which have you fighting in unique specific ways and all that and there's tons of like little costumes and stuff to unlock and little accessories but very fun game and this limited edition comes with uh, art book, soundtrack and then the DLC for the kind of banana split costume which basically just makes the girls almost naked basically but it's a very fun game with tons of fan service if you're a fan of hack and slash beat em ups you should definitely check this out on the ps4 i really enjoyed it only two parts z2 chaos and next i have a bunch of handheld goodies to share with you guys that have been going pretty nuts when it comes to the psp and ds really focusing on collecting for those two systems again so we're just going to run through a lot of these games pretty quick but here we have an interesting puzzle game that i've never heard anyone talk about Actually published by NIS America, I can't tell, but it's actually a different NIS America logo because I don't know if anyone remembers NIS America a few years back. They wanted to do this thing where they wanted to focus on not only bringing out their JRPGs and all that and the typical niche kind of games they bring out, but they wanted to bring out kind of like budget price, like just smaller kind of games and all that. And they were going to brand them with that logo, which I think they also use this logo for their anime now. But that didn't really work out. I guess it, that kind of fell through and they kind of stopped doing that. But this is an interesting puzzle game. It's called Poochie Poochie Virus. And I like it because it's actually a fast-paced, frantically fun puzzle game. But it's different. Like, it has a very different mechanic. And I'm, I'm always about puzzle games that try and do something different with the gameplay. So you have your colored kind of blocks. But what you do is you select three points and, like, three colored blocks to make a triangle. So it'll be like a huge like triangle that appears and then inside that triangle it'll trigger like anything that's like matching colors and stuff like that and other triangles and it's really unique really cool and i was playing it for quite a bit so i really enjoyed it so when i was looking for a different kind of puzzle game on the ds definitely check out poochie poochie virus and next i have a couple of pokemon ds games to share with you guys i guess it's kind of fitting given the shirt and the fact that it's the 20th anniversary already for pokemon which is insane plan on doing a video for pokemon and the 20th anniversary maybe down the road Here's a Pokemon game I definitely wanted to check out because one, I'm a big fan of strategy RPGs and I'm a big fan of Pokemon so I don't know why I haven't gotten around to getting this but I wanted to get it because just a FYI this game seems like it's getting a little bit harder to find but that's Pokemon Conquest and this is actually an interesting crossover game it's obviously Pokemon cross with Koei's popular series Nobunaga's Ambition which is also kind of an obscure series but it's pretty popular in Japan 
But that's an interesting crossover. I never would have imagined Pokemon crossover with Nobunaga's ambition. But it's a strategy RPG basically with like Pokemon characters and Nobunaga's ambition type of inspiration and characters. And I'm definitely looking forward to checking this out. And next we have a Pokemon game that I've always been interested in. It's just one of those curiosity kind of things. And I also like owning the kind of launch lineup games for systems and stuff like that. And I was an early adopter for the Nintendo DS. And to be honest, there wasn't a whole lot to play on the DS very early on. But I always remember seeing like ads for like the games available. And it was always like True Swing Golf and like Medios and this game here, which I remember seeing a lot of ads for. That's Pokemon Dash, which is a very early DS game. And this is honestly kind of like a tech demo type of game, but it's actually a Pokemon racing game. And it honestly, to be honest, feels something like that's more well suited for like a digital download game. So like a DSi kind of eShop type of game or maybe even the Wii U nowadays. But it's basically a Pokemon racing game that's heavily controlled on the bottom screen and played on the bottom screen. So you go around these like checkpoint to checkpoints and you're racing through and you're just like continuously swiping and all that to make Pikachu go through these levels and all that. And it's not like a typical racing game in the sense that the tracks are like straightforward and just like doing laps and all that. But it's actually just going checkpoint to checkpoint over like these maps and the stuff like that. So there's some pretty big maps and so it's not as simple as going there to there. You'll be going all across the map and going back and forth and tracing back. This is pretty crazy. There's different like terrain to take into account. Certain terrain slows you down. There's also a flying mechanic where you can like fly in balloons and then like drop down because that's required to cross certain gaps and get to certain checkpoints. So it's it's very tech demo-ish, but I I actually enjoyed it. I, I did find myself getting a little bit lost in some of the levels, but it's it's weird. It's just something that's really weird, and I can't believe this thing kind of exists. But it's a Pokemon racing game, and it's not not bad for a little tech demo game. I had some fun with it. So this first game here is a very weird game that I really never heard anyone talk about, and I was starting to get into it just because I commend this game for being different and just introducing such a novel, unique, refreshing concept. And on that same note, this game is very hard to describe, so bear with me, but that is What Did I Do to Deserve This, My Lord, to a very long and <laughs> very long name for a game, but this is a weird game, but it's unique. Is that it's a refreshing little game concept. Maybe feels like something I could have been a digital download, but NIS America decided to publish it, give it a physical copy. But this is a weird game. Basically you play the villain in like an RPG type of setting so you're like the bad guy you're the overlord and you have like this overlord apprentice guy who's like trying to help you and all that <laughs> to kind of kill all these RPG heroes because what it is is like you're building dungeons in a way you're building dungeons and like labyrinths and mazes for like these RPG heroes to go through so you have to in these environments by digging and stuff like that create like labyrinths and typical kind of like RPG layouts to make it as hard as possible for the RPG heroes because you want to kill the RPG heroes you don't want them getting to the overlord apprentice and you have to place the overlord apprentice so there's strategy there so it's part strategy game kind of reminds me of a tower defense game where you kind of making meandering paths and you want the longest path possible but it's weird because it's there's a limit to how much you can do this digging and stuff like that and if you don't dig as much you, can, you get rewarded by being able to level up the monsters in the kind of dungeons so monsters do form in dungeons but you don't get to place monsters it's really weird do you it's about like nutrients and monsters grow from nutrients and then they feed on each other become bigger monsters and those monsters as a result will fight any of the rpg heroes that are trying to get through your dungeon and capture the overlord guy but it's weird so in that sense, it's a very weird game, but I was so into it because I was like, this is just so silly and weird, and I'm absolutely down with this. So, very hard to describe. I might cover this game in a later video. I'm thinking about doing a PSP Hidden Gems video, and this might be in it. So, interesting game. But here is a game that's going to be hard to believe I don't own with however many PSP games I have, but I actually did not own Jean Dark yet, and I've just heard so much about this game, and I've really been craving a really good SRPG on the PSP, so I'll probably be playing this pretty soon, but this is, I've heard nothing but great things, it just sounds like a really quality SRPG by level 5, and I'm really down with the 
kind of historical reference in here and basing a game off of Joan of Arc and stuff like that is so interesting to me. It looks like it has beautiful cutscenes and just looks like a really pretty game for the PSP. Just one of those things though, you know, we have all these games that we hear so much about, we just never get around to picking it up and this game has always been like the same price for like ever. So I was like, yeah, I'll get it one day and I just never got around to getting it. And finally I was like, yeah, I'm going to pick up John Dark and finally play it. Next we have one PS1 pickup and this is... This is probably a really bad name for a game, but I don't know what they're thinking, but I think it's really hilarious to name, but uh, have you guys ever wanted to see my irritating stick? Well, here it is. Irritating stick for the PS1. What a great name, man. What a best best name in video game history, but irritating stick. It's a, it's a weird game. How do I, it's, it's, you're maneuvering this like stick. Well, it makes sense. It's like a stick, but you're maneuvering it through like these environments that are like rail kind of looking things and they're like labyrinth kind of maze like areas and you're trying to maneuver to stick through the environment without touching the sides and stuff like that because it gets like electrified or whatever so you're basically just trying to be really really careful but still trying to maneuver through these really maze like areas without touching the sides kind of like what operation is i guess you know how like an operation trying to get the piece without touching the metal sides and all that similar to the concept here where you're just trying to get through these environments without touching the sides and stuff like that but really weird game might be covered in a certain volume 2 episode that I plan on doing very soon, but that is irritating to stay. And a while back, for those who have seen it, would have seen that I did a video response to my buddy Nick Knack, who's been a longtime supporter of my channel. And he, I did a video response because he asked a really interesting question, and that was like music, bands, and artists that you discover from games. So definitely check that out if you haven't seen that. I thought it was a fun topic and definitely an interesting question that... I definitely thought about before but he was also doing a contest and I was lucky enough to be one of the contest winners I'd also like to congratulate the other winners as well but he sent me a lot of cool swag so let's start covering it so before we start jumping into all the really cool stuff Nick Knack sent me there was a note included with the package so let's just go ahead and read this real quick it says hey Mr. Nostalgic Dan first off I'd like to apologize for the lateness of this package a whole bunch of stuff took up my time and I had to delay this I know you understand yeah that's totally fine no worries anyway as promised here's the items I promised in the giveaway, as well as the snacks. I love the snacks. I already went to town on the snacks. They were pretty good. Hope there were no problems with the packaging. I hope the stuff is all intact. Yeah, the packaging was so good. Like, I wish you guys could have seen the packaging. Really good packaging. Everything was just beautifully protected. Other than that, thanks again for entering the contest, and I look forward to more giveaways on my channel. So definitely check out his channel. He does a lot of cool giveaways, and once you see some of the stuff he sent me, you you probably might want to be inclined to check out his channel for some future giveaways, but let's jump in. I want to cover the cool snacks he sent. A lot of actually Philippine-based snacks, it looks like, but this was really good. I like this. And this was a Gina Calamensi juice drink, and Calamensi juice or Calamensi limes, I think they're called, are really weird kind of fruits. They're like hybrid fruits. They kind of look like an orange, but they're like a hybrid of different flavors. They taste like a lime, orange, kumquat. Really, really interesting. This was really good. He also sent some clover chips, which I never heard of. These were barbecue flavored. These were pretty good. They reminded me of bugles. They kind of have that bugle taste, and I'm down with bugles. But these were so good. Like, I was addicted to these. These are insane, and I want more. And they were called Nagaraya Cracker Nuts. But yeah, these are so good, and they're just like peanuts, but they're inside these, like, edible shells, and they're just so crunchy and just so delicious. Like, the double flavor is kind of, like, like, sweet and sour at the same time. It's just really good. I want more of these, so so down with these these were awesome so the package you sent was just full of tons of cool swag so let's just start going through it we have some really cool looking playing cards for Mega Man X4 we have a cool keychain and I like this because I'm actually a big Dead or Alive fan and that's a Dead or Alive keychain of Tina actually from based off Dead or Alive 1 it's her retro Dead or Alive 1 outfit when she was a brunette actually so that's a cool little Dead or Alive keychain this keychain is super awesome and that's actually a tarot card keychain persona tarot card and this is the Emperor. I love the artwork of the Emperor cards, so that's really cool, and this is a really nice keychain. Here we have a cool bookmark of one of my more personal favorite characters from Street Fighter, and that's Jury, so that's a really cool looking bookmark. Here we have this cool badge with some really funny artwork. I thought this was just really funny. And it's Sephiroth, and it just says my mom thinks I'm cool, so. And then we have this really cool Persona Q postcard, which is really awesome. This has some really adorable artwork of all the characters there, kind of having like lunch or dinner. And it's just really cute. And as an artist and designer myself, one of my favorite things is art prints. And we have a really gorgeous art print here. Uh, Bayonetta and Amaterasu there. Really gorgeous artwork. I really love the artwork here. And it's just a 
interesting combination with Bayonetta and Okami, but really beautiful art. I can't wait to get this frame and put it up. And next we have a Danganronpa pin set. And this is from NIS America because NIS America actually does like tons of pin sets. They used to do like, and they still do for like various games they do. They'll make like pin sets and stuff like that. I believe I have a Neptunia Victory pin set. And I actually never got any of the Danganronpa pin sets. So this is really cool to have. And also, especially since it has my waifu, Hina. So I love Hina from the first Danganronpa. But this is really cool. It's also got Monokuma there. And some really personal favorite characters of mine. But... Yeah, that's really awesome. And next is something really cool that you can actually get from NIS America's online store. And I never got around to getting this because I was interested in it. And it's a nice like little display kind of piece or a cool item for a specific time of the year. But I never got around to picking it up because it's such a specific item. But it looks really cool in person. And definitely put this on the Christmas tree this coming year. But it has a really cool, pretty Christmas ornament ball. <laughs> it's really cool. It's really shiny. You got the printy face on the front and then it has the printy wings on the back so really nice and if anything it's a really nice display piece too so really cool little unique item and you can get this actually from NS America's online web store still and the reason there's a Danganronpa pin set is is because it fits with something very very cool that's inside this anime expo booklet and this is actually pretty cool in itself because I've never really been to any expo I really hope to go to some convention or expo someday but it's really cool just flipping through this. I already went through it and kind of looked at everything. And This has something really cool inside of it. And it is one of my very first autographs for anything gaming related. So inside here is something I really, really cherish. And definitely one of the unique pieces of my game collection for sure. I can't believe I'd actually ever get this autograph. But it's an autograph for... I don't know if you guys can see that. But it's Kazutaka Kodaka. Director and writer for Danganronpa, one of my personal favorite series. You guys know how much I love Danganronpa and how much this definitely means to me. He's also a director and writer for a lot of other Spike Chunsoft games that Spike Chunsoft does. But So now that I have this autograph, I'm definitely going to have to get a frame for it. I'll be framing it pretty soon and really carefully cut out the page here. But this is so, so cool to have. It's just a really unique item. and. Again, I thought this was a very generous giveaway from my buddy Nick Knack. He hooked it up with a lot of cool, unique swag items and really cool items that to have in my game collection. So definitely appreciate it, Nick Knack. Thank you for holding the contest and thank you for sending this out to me and all this stuff. But anyways, that pretty much wraps up pickups. And I almost forgot this, which is a really cool item. And believe it or not, my very first Perler Beat Sprite that I own. But this is really cool and sweet looking. Check this out. It's Chrono. How cool is that? It looks so cool, especially on video. But... That is a really cool Chrono Perler Beat Sprite, one of my very first Perler Beat Sprites actually, so definitely put it up on one of the shelves here. And I almost forgot this too, but this is really cool, and I had no idea these even existed, but it's one of those like blind box figures, and it's actually for Growlancer, and I thought that was like so obscure because I had no idea these existed, let alone doing a kind of mystery box figure for Growlancer, since Growlancer is a, a series I like, but it's just kind of lesser known in general. And the figure I got is actually the kind of main girl here, and that's Corinne from Growlancer 5. So it's actually a really nice figure. And I'll give you guys a better look at the figure here, but it's actually really cute and really nicely detailed for such a small figure. But this is Corinne from Growlancer 5. And it's really nicely detailed. She's kind of got like a translucent kind of skirt. She's got her translucent kind of wings, and she's so adorable and cute looking. A sucker for those pigtail girls, man, but... Really adorable, really cute little figure of Corinne. So that will pretty much do it guys for this very long recent pickups covering everything I picked up in the month of December and January. So basically end of the last year and beginning of this year but there's a lot of stuff. But anyways I feel like I was overdue for a very long video eventually. But anyways thank you for watching. Until next time please take it easy guys. Bye guys.